All right, I just want to share um, what I found in from King James uh, about uh, religious texts and um, homosexual, uh, you know, relations or understanding. Um, you know, because a lot of people think that scripture is against homosexuality, um, and it certainly appears that way upon, you know, uh, in some in some uh, interpretation. So I'm going to share what I found because it's never felt right to me. Obviously, um, here we go. Uh, King James the first put the Bible together as the producer around the early 1600s as kind of he was a director almost of, of putting all the books together deciding how it was done um, it's the most widely used Bible if you actually look um, a lot of the scripture has been changed since then so if you ever want the best um, translations um, he was a master mason I found out um, and you know he was inspired by God and and um yeah it's it's just you know he it's it's a deliberate deception a lot of what's in the bible you know for those who can see obviously what what we're trying to talk about here so um he was openly gay uh king james uh at the time uh, or bisexual you know he had a wife and then he would also had lovers and um you know he he would say like uh Christ had John and I have George. Um, so he, he had a bunch of different, he had a couple of different lovers. Um, and he would justify it by saying that Christ had lovers as well. Um, and, you know, there's pictures of Christ falling asleep with, you know, uh, you know, with, with a, just one uh, beloved disciple on his uh, chest, you know. So, um, yeah, in Matthew nineteen twelve, uh, there's there's a lot of references to a particular disciple that Jesus loves. You know, an unnamed one of them that 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 was the one that Jesus loved, and you know there was jealousy and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, they couldn't just come out and say it. They have to kind of leave it, leave a hint there. Um, it's classic Bible sort of language. They they want you to figure it out. It's meant it was, it's a test of our mentality. Um, you know, the scripture is written, it knows us before we know ourselves. Um, yeah, we're meant to go on a collective journey. It's, it's, it's whole purpose is to undo the collective, you know, mind, uh, mess <laughs> and, uh, and to get us to, to, you know, to properly see the inner salvation that is, that is ever present. So, um, you know, it goes on into eunuchs and, and how there's three types and, um, uh, you know that there are eunuchs with a feminine nature that were just born that way by birth, and that actually they're the true eunuchs, um, and they're not unable to have sex; they're unwilling. You know, so effeminate men, um, and yeah, it goes on to um, Bill Donahue's great teacher on all this. He, he's um, I'll put links in the bottom to to the Facebook post that I've made about this and um, to his videos so if you want to learn more. Um, there's a lot more references and things like that, but you know, I'm just giving the seed and people can go off and figure it out for themselves. But, um, main intention here is to, you know, just to help anyone who's struggling with this, with their family members. Um, maybe that, that deep divide between religious people who are very literal, you know, um, and, and people who are just generally connecting to God themselves and, and have a bit of a better sense, you know, directly of what's right and wrong here and, are conflicted about it and but want to you know unpick the um the riddle so it's just a riddle so here we go uh praying to the lord or jehovah in the old testament you know could it be that the lord in the old testament is actually the devil you know in in a lot of cases or jehovah so you know who are we praying to <laughs> uh the cursing of the serpent you know and and you know think of the serpent the serpent is this kundalini allegory of of rising up the tree of of knowledge you know it, the, the church always gets us not to seek knowledge and, and to just have faith but but truly knowledge you know my people perish for lack of knowledge so here we go but so there's an inner illumination that reveals the true nature of god the snake the coiled serpent the kundalini rising um, you could say it's the whole purpose for why we're here. You know, that's why 
uh, fruitarianism and, and uh, flat earth are on the first page of the Bible, whereas they're the biggest truths that help you unlock all the stuff. Just look at the first page of the King James Bible and you'll, you'll see fruitarianism, the fruit of the seed-bearing tree will be your meat, your me at, to be me all, in a meal. So then you'll know liberation by inner gnosis. Um, yeah, the Bible was written that way deliberately to deceive for a purpose. This, you know, this is the world that we're born into. We have to figure this out, you know. You can't just sit around and let someone else do it. The, the churches are, you know, preaching to this day, you know, uh, literalist interpretations that uh, make it seem like a history book when, you know, there's obviously more to it. So, um, so obviously those that don't enter within are deceived intentionally, you know, because they're the ones that'll be the ones that start wars and create churches and all this stuff. Um, it's unnecessary. Uh, so yeah, Corinthians 2, said, Jesus says, Be that as it may, I may not be a burden to you, yet crafty fellow that I am, I've, I've caught you by trickery. Um, in Isaiah it says, Do not rejoice in your sacrifices for the blood beasts and bulls. Who, who has required this? Which God? God doesn't want us killing animals. You know, with blood on our hands. What, what, would, what, would God want, what would a good God want with blood on your hands and, and trying to pray? Uh, you know, it makes sense why we're getting the results a lot of us are getting with prayer sometimes. Um, the good God wants you to rise and meet him in face to face land of Pineal. You know, fasting, taking no thought, uh, breathing, all this kind of stuff. You know, to be more passive, gentle, peaceful, and, and holding a healing light. You know, that's, that's it. Um, yeah, so that's right. So yeah, I just wanted to share that. Um, obviously, there's more to it. But, you know, reading the Old Testament and, and seeing where it says the Lord says, um, you know, I, I know that there's all the scripture I've seen where it kind of condemns, uh, you know, where a man to be with a mankind or to be with a womankind. Uh, in terms of like sleeping, to lie with someone, you shouldn't lie, you shouldn't have nakedness and all this. That's always from the Lord's perspective, you know. So, um, you know, God doesn't lord over us, you know. That's that's another one. That's another God. But yeah, I just wanted to share all that. And, you know, this is a long intergenerational process, kind of like the foundation series. You know, it's Hari, Hari Selden. So the ones who are talking truth are going to be very... Seldom, uh, rare, um, but got to praise them. That's what Hari Hari, Hare Krishna, and Krishna is Christ. John is um, Christ's best friend and companion, and it's blue gods, red devils. You know the electricity as we cross the fiction from the blue to the purple rain and up beyond. So yeah, that's all I have for now, and uh, you know we can get very passionate about this because it's it's terrible that all these uh, young, very filled with light and bright uh, people who who are trying to figure out their sexuality, and you know obviously it goes too far and it's very perverted as well, um, and a lot of people are getting dragged in it on both sides, but but just the ones that are that way by nature, um, you know, there's it's um it's certainly a good reminder to just love each of us and to seek who we truly are for ourselves as God made us and, and to, um, yeah, to really, you know, embody that. So that's my message for the day. Much love.